Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. It's Tuesday, we're going to move on with this week's theme of short songs, and we look at two songs from a band. Each song must be under three minutes each. Three minutes each. Today we're going to be looking at Aphex Twin. We've got two songs coming up. we got got uh, Avril 14th and Film. We're going to check out Film first, see what's going on. Oh yeah, very light, tons of groove, lots of momentum. Yeah, we got a nice eight bar phrase, and every time we loop the phrase, we introduce a new idea. At least so far, we've had three ideas in uh, 24 bars, so. Yeah, I like how they brought it down a little bit to introduce this melody line. had so much sound that these little pockets of silence are a nice contrast to that. A full bar of silence with the fade out, the fade off, fade out, whatever. Some really interesting rhythmic work in that last passage of the snare and drum, or sorry, the snare and bass. Yeah, very cool stuff. So we have like this, uh, just wanted to make, just wanted to make sure because it was, uh, it was not, uh, pulling up the recommended videos. Um, so yeah, we have this, this ambient drum and bass sort of electronica. Uh, there is no bass though. So not drum and bass. This ambient electronic, uh, sorry, ambient music with electronic uh, drums going on behind it. And the drums tend to veer into ideas that are not typically humanly possible. I don't want to say they're not humanly possible. I have seen humans do some ridiculous things with instruments. I'm not saying this couldn't be done, but a majority of people I don't think would be able to pull off some of the ridiculously fast uh snare rolls i think there's a a, a bit of a uh almost feel almost sound like triggered hi hat roll as well uh although there would also have to be some interesting mixing because of the way that there's almost no reverberation on the the snare hit it almost doesn't even sound like a snare so it might be physically possible but it would also take a little bit of extra work outside of just the performance to nail the same feel. Regardless though, we have this very catchy, energetic, driving drum pattern, uh, drum passages, I would say. It, it might be a pattern, but the pattern 
seems to be fairly lengthy at least. Maybe it's an entire eight bar phrase. And then we have these gorgeous ambient piano and pad elements going on above that. And honestly, above that seems kind of strange. I typically just say that because melodies traditionally sit above your rhythm section. But here the drums are louder than the melodic elements, which really drives it. it, it one, it provides the drive, the momentum. It really sets it in a center stage. But it also makes the drums feel more like the lead instrument, which I think is interesting given that it is the one that seems to change the least and is the most interesting, at least to me, on a technical level. Now, I really like how we have a lot of contrast in this song. There's elements at the beginning that really work with there's still direction, but the drive isn't quite there yet. We have momentum, it's just a bit of a slower pace. And it really isn't until about the halfway point when the drums come in and with their kicked up rhythmic elements that really pushes the song to the end. So we have this contrasting idea between sort of leisure and momentum. Taking your time and, and you know, bursting through. Uh, but then we also have some ideas of sound and space. The beginning of the song really doesn't allow much space to shine through. The notes are being held. They also have extreme reverb on them. They're allowed to really breathe and ring out. Uh, so we have these, these long tapered off endings to the notes. The drums, even though they're not as chaotic as they are at the end, chaotic is kind of the wrong word, but even though there's not as many attacks as there are at the end, there's still a lot of, uh, you know, hits. They're still providing a lot of, uh, you know, taking up a lot of space, especially against the longer notes in the ambient stuff. There really isn't a lot of rests in either of these instruments. And about the halfway point, again, we start to see these ideas of silence sneaking into the piece. Sometimes it's just a bar. I mean, sometimes it's just a beat. It could be at the end of a passage, the end of a phrase, end of a bar. Uh, it could start off an idea. And there was actually one moment where we had just a bar of silence with a tapering off of a pad sound. And while that isn't pure silence, it is a long time given how energetic and active the song is, to not really do anything new. We have one sound and it is leaving, but we don't have drum hits filling the space. Uh, we don't have new notes coming in. It's just watching something slowly leave. So I kind of see that more in the element of silence rather than in sound. Um, so we, we do see this back and forth between you know, sound and silence, taking up the auditory sound sphere or leaving the space for the audience to sit in the pocket of silence. And I love that. I think it's really interesting that the song has so much drive and momentum, especially when we kind of come out of that pocket of the song where we see a bunch of these gaps. As soon as we come out of that, the drums go into a bit of a solo passage and really hit up the rhythmic intensity and complexity between the snare and the bass and really doing some interesting things there as far as accenting different beats, sometimes off beats, uh, and really sort of feeling a bit more disorienting than the rest of the song which has pretty much a steady forward momentum and an easily listenable rhythmic element to it. So, yeah, there's some really cool things popping up in here, even if it mostly consists of two ideas, and it is fairly simple to listen to and envelops one thematic concept, which is, as far as I see it, a very peaceful, elegant song. It's not really anything changing up as far as atmosphere or tone or emotion. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. I, I don't think I've heard Aphex Twin before. Uh, maybe we did them on a live stream. Maybe we did do them on a live stream. But, uh, I don't know. If we did, it's not coming to mind. So, this might not be my first 
uh, exposure to Aphex Twin, but it is an early one, that's for sure. And it's an interesting one because, I don't know, I kind of always knew they were Electronica or at least Electronica related, but not like this. I kind of expected more danciness, and this is very elegant, I would say, in the execution of atmospheric goals rather than sort of textural ones and going for high concept melody uh, and catchiness and hooks and stuff like that. This is sort of something you can just kind of sit in and calm down and relax to, and I like that. So let's see what Avril 14th is, and uh, maybe we can see how that compares to film a little bit. Now, interestingly, right off the bat, assuming we stick with this idea, we still have the relaxing component of the piano and pads that we had last time, but we have a catchier hook here. This melody line, assuming it repeats, is very different from the purely atmospheric stuff we just checked out. Yeah, I like that rhythmic complexity there, seeing different, or seeing the two rhythms and the two hands line up and then separate a little bit at the end of the bar. And that happens all over the place. Love these little embellishments, grace notes, uh, lead-in notes. So many cool little things being added on to the top. Now, interestingly, there is no drum there. Are we done? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Apex Twin likes to put a ton of silence at the end of their tracks. <laughs> I, I'm really used to like a second or two. And there's like five, five to seven seconds of silence at the end of both of these. It's really confusing because I'm kind of thinking, oh, or, you know, we move it into something else. But these are short songs. Uh, I feel like the time's already up. Where, where's What's going on? <laughs> Confuses me. So this was interesting because it is sort of a counterpiece to film where film was highly atmospheric with an emphasis on rhythmic elements in the drum and not providing a lot of drive and momentum. This was an extremely leisurely stroll without any sort of huge momentum pushes with rhythmic elements, really kind of sitting in a singular place, utilizing strong melodic and harmonic elements to not only drive the song, but also provide the atmospheric elements that we saw in film. Both songs are very dependent on atmosphere, but this one aims for more of a melodic purpose, while the other one aims for more of a rhythmic one. Now, what I really like about this one, though, is that the rhythmic attention from the from film is still present in here. I'd almost say that the rhythm would be a strong component to Aphex Twin, something I would expect to see going forward if we check out more from them. Um, I don't know if that's true. I've only heard two, maybe three songs from them, so it's not an exhaustive exploration of their works, but it's something that I'm seeing crop up between both of these. What I really like here is that both instruments, well, both hands of the piano, are sort of relegated to different ideas. One hand is harmonic ideas, setting the... 
uh, the sound floor for the melody to play over and the other is the melody. However, they're both acting in a rhythmic fashion. So the right hand, well, I mean, no, let me stop there. The harmonic hand, the one playing the sound floor, is working with straight eighth notes, just constantly uh, moving up and down a chord through eighth notes. And it sets this rhythmic element that the melody can play around with. There's several sections where the melodic element is going to line up perfectly with the harmonic element rhythmically, but will deviate slightly, maybe with grace notes or holding out a note, uh, you know, putting a dot on a note, giving it that extra half of its length and coming on an offbeat or something before lining back up. Sometimes it will deviate at the end of a phrase and start on an offbeat and give it this disjointed element, this sort of back and forth uh, call and response feel before lining back up. And it's this this idea, it's almost like, <laughs> like blurry vision. Uh, in movies, how they do it, and you know, you get the two the two images lined up, and then they like separate and come back, and then they like do this warble before lining up again. That's kind of how I'm hearing what's going on here. We see a lot of this returning, returning to form, where they're both doing the same thing, then they separate for a little bit and come back, and separate for a little bit and come back, and it's really interesting to hear the playfulness in the rhythmic elements here that adds to a bit of the complexity. Even though what's actually written is not super complex, it is very, well, it adds an extra element, an, ex an extra spice to the song that makes it feel more complex than it is because of these simple changes. And I absolutely love it. There's a couple of parts I think it was near the end maybe about one and a half minutes in where the melody line began to use pickup notes which uh, basically means instead of starting the melody line on the downbeat of one it might start on the downbeat of four in the bar prior or maybe the and of four on the bar prior so it has this element of not not like a hiccup but just like you know, jumping the gun, starting a bit early, uh, you can pretty much feel the downbeat. You can feel each bar's length through the sound floor element with, just with those eighth notes. You just follow that along um, and you can feel out the chordal pattern it goes through and you can kind of feel that return to home, bringing back the, the chordal resolution back to wherever it starts with the chord progression. And the melody line tends to jump that a little bit at the end or introduces some grace notes. Grace notes are really cool. They are a way to write two notes, kind of. Oh, man. Uh, okay, in layman's terms, it's kind of like two notes in the same beat. So instead of writing a hyper-complex thing that says, you know, hold this note up until a 64th of a beat... Uh, before the next downbeat and then play this 64th note and then play the downbeat you have this little thing called a grace note and it's this little it's a much tinier note next to the one you're going to be landing on so you would get like a da 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 you get that really quick note before it or you know you can go up and go da da whatever uh, but a grace note is like putting two notes on the same downbeat you're, you're playing the other one real quickly and moving off of it um, and the distance between the two notes is entirely up to the composer or the conductor, however they're wanting the, or, you know, the performer. In this case, we don't have conductors or, or compo well, the composer is the performer in a lot of these modern cases with, you know, pop music and, and rock music and stuff like that, electronica. Um, but yeah, so there is, <laughs> went off on a bit of a tangent there. There's a couple of grace notes in here, or at least what sound to me like they are grace notes. Uh, and they're usually paired in the sections where we see a lot of this rhythmic exploration, utilizing some pickup notes. You know what, though? Come to think of it, I, I wonder, the only time I've heard pickup notes being utilized is before a song starts. 
I wonder if we can also call a pickup note before a phrase starts. Like in the middle of a song. I don't know. You know what? Oh, no. I think I think my memory's getting hazy because now I am kind of remembering a couple of situations where a conductor is like, all right, let's pick up, you know, let's start on a pickup note going into bar 18. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm just getting old. Oh, man. Uh, you know, music education was like a decade ago now. So, yeah, some of my memories are still a bit get, getting a bit hazy there, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, gotta gotta brush up. And anyways, I am just like way off topic here. But yeah, so we have these pickup notes that are used to rhythmically, you know, change up some of the stuff that's going on in this core melody line. We also have some grace notes, and then there's also some just some really playful elements going on with maybe like some sixteenth note runs or putting a gap on a downbeat and emphasizing the offbeat where the harmonic element is pretty much still staying completely straight there, just all downbeats and offbeats doing the eighth note stuff. Um, and it's just these little moments of rhythmic complexity between the two lines, and it's what I love about duets. I have written a ton of duets. I love, I don't know, there's something about a duet that is, there's a lot of purity and simplicity to it, and it allows both instruments to shine. There really isn't usually a lead element uh, unless you're I mean you can talk about duets but usually if there is a lead element you're going to be like this instrument with an accompaniment uh, you know the piano is accompanying the saxophone or whatever it's a saxophone solo with a piano part that goes under it but like with this I would almost see this as a duet even though that the harmonic element does sort of fill in the accompaniment role where it doesn't add too much on its own. There aren't too many melody lines it provides. It really is the sound floor for most of the song. Uh, I would still say that it incorporates duetic elements. I don't know if that's a word, I just made it up. Where we see rhythmic complexity by playing off of both of these lines and allowing them both to support and make each other also sound greater and larger at times when they come together. There's just a lot of really cool stuff there. And I like how we can see these two sides of Aphex Twin, one that is highly atmospheric and showcases some of the more electronic elements, especially when we see the drumming sections in film, and then more of this melodic exploration with what is technically not even an electronic piece. It sounds like it is just a piano. Uh, might have even been played on a real piano. It might not be keyboard with samples at all. I don't know. But there is definitely this this cool element about Aphex Twin where they can dance the the line between purely melodic music and sort of that rhythmic element and textural element we tend to see in a lot of electronic music. And they have a, a strong sense of being able to balance the two while still having a key component to their music, which is rhythmic playfulness. So, yeah, I I'm... I'm pretty interested in Aphex Twin. I can't say that this is anything I would listen to often. If I wanted purely piano music, I would probably look towards classical or maybe even some jazz stuff, uh, stuff that just incorporates a little bit more rhythmic complexity. But I appreciate that there is somebody who is creating modern music that is maybe more simple, aimed at more of a mainstream audience, that still looks at music this way with uh, ideas of of theme and ornamentation and you know rhythmic complexity and how two uh, two voices can play off of each other not just harmonically but also rhythmically even though it is a bit simpler i like that i appreciate that it exists in this form so those are my thoughts on Aphex Twin, Film and Avril 14th this is where you guys come in though hit me up in the comments let me know what you thought of all this, if you enjoyed it or not. When you're done commenting, you can head up to the description box. There's a link in there for Linktree, which is a phenomenal website that puts all the links, critical, rea critical reaction related, into a single menu. Whether you want to join the Patreon, uh, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord community, all those links are there and more. 
above the description box. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, with the next short songs video. And right about now-ish, I would say, we also have today's special selection coming out. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.